What's up guys, welcome back. Hope you guys enjoyed that last video. Um, I know it's just strictly training, uh, but since we got that up, we had uh, quite a few people that was asking about what the current meal plan is, how my diet's looking since we're looking to put on some more size. So I figured today before we get off to the gym and get some training done, I kind of give you guys an insight of how I'm eating right now as opposed to how I would normally eat when I'm in prep. So of course in an off season, so normal breakfast is still about the same. Uh, I'll have oatmeal, cream of rice. Uh, it just kind of, cream of wheat, sorry. It just kind of depends on what I want to have. But like I said, just your basic oats. And I have that, a couple cups of that. Uh, Kodiak cakes, a lot of you guys are familiar with those. I'll usually do the buttermilk or peanut butter flavor. Uh, nothing too special, but I'll have that. Um, then I'll follow up with my protein. So I'll either have egg whites sometimes, or for the most part, since I'm always gonna go, then I always have my ISO from Yamamoto. So I'll have that 60 grams, or like I said, I'll have like the egg whites. A lot of you guys might be familiar with this brand. So that pretty much sums up breakfast. You know, it's always really, really simple. There's nothing special about it. Uh, then mid morning, which is the next meal, cause it's 1130 here. In Texas in Houston so I'm gonna have chicken and rice chicken and rice the basics now a lot of people want to know like how much I'm eating uh, how often I'm eating it kind of varies so days that I train a little bit heavier you know I've have legs or back then of course the amount of food is a little bit higher only because I know I'm gonna put out a little bit more energy that day but generally across the board it's not not too 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 much different so I have just grilled chicken breast. I think you guys might have saw a previous video where I showed you how we're prepped that, you know, clean it, get all the junk off of it, put it in the oven 20 minutes, 400 degrees, and then you get to go. So I'm having about 10 ounces of that when I'm having chicken or beef. But for the most part, mid-morning, it's always going to be chicken. So cook it, keep it stored, you know, the basics. Got to have your skill. A lot of people always wonder, is it necessary to just weigh your food or should you eyeball it? But of course you're gonna weigh it. Most people that follow me already know that. Eight. All right, there we go. 10.15. Okay. Now, for a lot of people, they'll just eat the whole chicken breast. I can't really do that. It, that's just, I just don't like it. So for me, I'll always cut it up or mix it up and then put it together with the rice. And that pretty much makes it a lot easier to get down because eating chicken and rice separately, uh, I'm just not really used to that. So you gotta go through a little bit of work just to get that done. And a lot of you guys know you're working with these uh, chicken, tenderloins they'll have that piece of fat that's right down the middle some people take it out pre-cooked i don't really bother with it because that's just too much time and i'm already busy enough as it is so once it's cooked then i just pull it out it's not a big deal some people just keep it in they just don't even worry about it but me once you start eating it you can kind of tell when it's in there and for me i'm not a big fan of fat so I try to just take that out. It's not on every piece, it's usually just a few of them. But that's that. Get the scissors, cut it up. Sometime if I have time, I would have already done this ahead of time. So this would already be cut up and then I just pour it into a bowl and that's it. But this way, This takes a second when you're actually ready to eat. It's not too bad. That's roughly about six or seven of those chicken tenders. Put our microwave about a minute. Nothing crazy because I don't like really, really hot food. So anything longer than that, it's going to be steaming hot. And when I'm ready to eat, I'm ready to eat. So I don't really want to wait. 
All right, as far as rice or carbohydrates, I'm doing potatoes, sweet potatoes. Um, I don't have any white potatoes right now. I've been doing mostly sweet potatoes. But when I'm doing rice, instead of using a rice cooker like I would normally do, because like I said, I'm just always on the go these days. I don't really want to take time to sit and wait for rice to cook. So it comes in handy to buy these ready to go packs. And they're usually about a couple of two cups of rice, just depending on which brand. So I either get those or I think I've showed you guys the Uncle Ben's before. So one of the two. So the store down here in Texas, we have HEB and sometimes they run low on supply. So I just kind of grab as many of them as I can whenever I go. But with these, uh, you have to put a few holes in it before you put it in the microwave. So you kind of take it out. Stab and go crazy a little bit. So by the time you're done with that, chicken's done. So you can see it's not too hot, but it's hot enough. And that rice, that one takes about two minutes. The other, the Uncle Ben's is only a minute, 30 seconds. So, some water. So that's meal number two. Meal number three, it just kind of, it's usually post-workout if I'm training in the daytime. So in the last video, I told you guys I'm more used to training at nighttime now because this gives me an opportunity to eat more food throughout the day. So I have more energy. The only downside to that is if I'm training later in the evening, then I don't get as many meals after. So once again, it just depends on how I'm feeling that day, what my schedule is like, as to what time I'm actually going to train. But usually post-workout is always going to be I'll have ground beef. So I'll do ground beef, sweet potato or white potato. I'm doing 10, 12 ounces of the ground beef. And just depending on where I'm at and what I want my body to look like just determines the leanness of the meat. So this one here, I believe is 80-20 or 85-15. Uh, but if I was in prep, then I'd be doing a 96-4, which of course is less fat, uh, it's, but a lot more dry. So this one is kind of like eating you know, a fatty burger from somewhere. So instead of me grabbing a cheeseburger or something every chance I get, I'll just have that. Um, and potatoes. When I have potatoes, usually 16 ounces. So I do a, a pound on that. Uh, when I'm having rice, like I said, it's two cups. So the meal stuff can kind of vary. It's kind of a, I don't have a set amount of food that I'm eating. I'm just trying to eat as much as I possibly can. So like I said, if I'm training legs or back, areas that I know I'm gonna use a lot of energy, I try to really, really eat. Days that I'm not, that I may be training chest or shoulders or something that, that's, you know, it's not gonna take as much energy because it's just not as big of a muscle group, then I get food in, but it's just not as much as I have on those days. Um, I don't know if you guys see in the background here, Domino's Pizza. So that is part of my diet every other day. So every other day I have a large pizza, extra large pizza or whatever, because I actually need those calories. Uh, it's been proven for me that I can't really gain a lot of weight because of my genetics so they just happen to burn up whatever the hell i eat uh way too quick so when you're trying to put on some muscle that's actually a problem to have that every other day sometime i'll do like a double triple cheeseburger it just depends because even though i'm in off season i still want to maintain you know some form of being in good shape which is pretty easy like i said giving me because of my genetics but it makes it hard when i'm trying to gain weight so this is basic, you know, you just dump the rice in. And I like to add butter for a source of fats. And it gives it a little bit extra flavor too, so. There's a couple brands I'll use. Most of the time it's always this one. Just cause, you know, it crumbles and it melts really easy. But the food's hot enough, any butter melts easy actually. So this one, this whipped butter, I'll use this, or I'll use this Kerrygold. So either one of the two, I'll have them only with the chicken and rice. With the beef and potatoes, I don't really add much to it. Uh, maybe some seasoning and stuff like that. So when I'm cooking the meat, I'll have to use either Tony, a lot of you guys are familiar with Mrs. Dash. Um, we have this steak seasoning, I use this <clears throat> pretty much on everything and then when I'm actually eating the food then I'll use this McCormick it's like a mixture of salt 
a sea salt. So it's really good. Uh, as far as when I'm having the pancakes, I know I'm kind of talking all over the place, but that's because we're doing this on the fly. Uh, I'd have, I'll use cookie butter or my buddy, you guys, I'm sure you're familiar with Falcon Nuts, but he'll send me out some peanut butter every now and then, different flavors. So this is what I'll put on the pancakes when I'm having those. And I'll use either sugar-free syrup, or if I can't find that, I'll just get like a light syrup because, you know, like I said, I want to maintain some decent shape eating a bunch of sugar because I eat a lot of junk food in all season. And also these cupcakes right here. So <laughs> I got these from this place that's next to the gym. I haven't had a chance to try the other three, but oh, they're so nice. I don't want to mess them up, but I'll let you know how those guys are. So like I said, the diet kind of right now, it's not restrictive in any way because the goal is to grow. So it's pretty much eat as much as I can, but I have to be conscious that it's not just the amount of calories because if I was just chasing calories then I'd be eating whatever, but I need quality carbohydrates and protein as well to build lean muscle. So remember, like I told you guys before, all weight isn't good weight. So you can pick up a lot of weight on the scale but then when you're bodybuilding or you're trying to get in shape, when you actually start dieting, if that's not real muscle that you built based on your nutrition, then it's pretty much just going to fall off. You know, it's just weight that you gain, water retention, body fat from different foods that you thought were helping you because you were going by the scale weight. So I'm not really chasing that right now. All this food is based on how my workouts are going, how my recovery is going, how my body's actually feeling. If I'm getting good pumps in the gym, then I know I'm on track. If that's not happening I'm, and I'm getting really exhausted, then that means I'm not get, having enough food. So then I just adjust carbohydrates and protein accordingly based on how I look, how I feel, and like I said, what I'm training that day. So that's just a quick overview. You know, the basics is still the chicken, the beef, the rice. Uh, fish is stuck in here. I'm not having, I know a lot of people have fish in the off season. I don't, but if I do, it's tilapia. So I just get a bag of that and Whenever it comes time for that, I just, you know, put about 12 to 14 ounces of fish in the oven. It usually takes about seven to nine minutes. It's really, really quick. Have that with some rice and call it a day. But like I said, with me being in off season for a good while, now I'm just having foods that are going to give me, you know, as much calories as possible. Trying to stay clean, trying to put a little bit of dirty food in there to up the calories. But like I said, it's all based on your body because everybody's body is going to operate differently. Uh, I know some people have hit me up and said that, you know, their body doesn't really like rice that much. They prefer potatoes. Uh, there's not a big difference for me. Uh, my body feels like it performs the same whether I have potatoes or rice. Like I said, I just notice a difference for me when I'm having junk food included in my diet. So whether it's like sweets, Reese's, you guys know I love Reese's. If I'm having some Reese's or pizza or pancakes or whatever, I have to have that junk food included in my diet to actually grow because that's what's actually making me gain weight right now. So we got about a year, uh, maybe a little less than a year. Like I said, we're not picking the show or anything until we reach a certain point that we feel like it's comfortable and then, you know, start to go back into prep. But the past three years, I've put a lot of work in, having shows, you know, co competing two, three times a year. Uh, that's a lot in a very, very short time, seeing as how I've only been doing this for a short amount of time overall. So the goal is to grow. I'll keep you guys updated on what kind of food we're having, uh, you know, throughout as different stages go and whatnot. But like I said, I want to keep this basic. It's going to have the chicken and rice uh, before we train. And today, actually going to train some shoulders. So that's why this meal isn't huge. So you see, I just have it in this container right here. And, you know, it's just 10 ounces of chicken, a couple cups of rice, uh, nothing major. I have this. Have some water. And I actually have my, let me grab these really quick. So I'll generally, either I have my, my aminos pre-workout. So sometimes if I remember, then I'll have them actually with my pre-workout meal. So I just put this in the water just before I train because like I said, I'll be training here within the next 45 minutes to an hour. Let me just dump this in there. Let 
You guys know how messy this can get. Dealing with these powders. This generally calls for just one and a half scoops, but since I have a little bit more water in here than normal, then I'm just gonna do, you know, double the amount. Table. You know, a lot, of, a lot of people always wonder like how important your sports supplements are. Trust me, they're important. You just have to know when to take them and what kind to take. So if you do that, you take them correctly, then your body actually gets the benefit of what you need. This is watermelon flavor, so it's actually really good, I believe. Yep, watermelon. All right, get this food in. It wouldn't seem like it's that exciting. Um, but then again, you know, think about it. When I'm in off season, I mean, when I'm in prep, I'm always like, oh, yeah, I want to have all these foods, all these different things that I want to eat when the diet is done. So I did that for about a month, month and a half. And, you know, frankly, I just kind of got tired of it. Uh, so I kind of missed the discipline of a structured, you know, meal plan. And because I, I was just eating whatever, you know, I would go have Mexican food, whatever, uh, Italian food. It didn't matter. Anything that wasn't chicken and rice and beef and potatoes. Uh, but I did that for about a month. And then, like I said, I just kind of got tired of it. And so I slowly started to incorporate, you know, a structured meal plan back in. Uh, some good quality foods. Because, like I said, it's just you... When your body is in, you know, performing your workouts, then you got to look at what type of food you're having. So, like I said, those foods are good, but I can definitely tell the difference when I'm having the nutrition that I need. So, a proper meal plan, of course, is necessary. This is whether you're bodybuilding or not. So, you got to keep that in mind. There's a lot of different ways you can prepare your meals. Um... I don't get that fancy with it because I just don't want to take the time to do that. I have way more stuff to do in a day than to worry about making my food taste a certain way when the point is just to eat because I'm eating for a purpose. Mm. And I even get clients that will ask, can they have snacks throughout the day? I always tell them, if you're eating the proper amount of food, um, you won't really, I don't really have a need to have snacks throughout the day, especially even when I'm on a meal plan that doesn't have junk food included because I'm having such a large amount of food that I'm not hungry in between meals. So if you're having that problem where you're finding yourself that you're, hungry in between your meals, then maybe think about getting some more protein or more carbs and some more quality food, actually. Um, protein for one, you know, if you're having a sufficient amount of protein, then you're not gonna really be hungry in between meals like that. So here, just knock this out. This is a beautiful day. It's gonna be a good day. I usually around this time also, I'm so busy all over the place. This one I'll check. My client emails and stuff like that. Life's a little bit different now. Um, in a good way. Everything's in a good way, actually. <laughs> uh, since I'm not... The last time you guys know I was working... We did a meal plan video, so I, you know, kind of told you how we eat around schedule, around clients and so on and so forth. But now I pretty much just operate online. Um, Yamamoto Nutrition has made it possible for me to not have to physically go in and train clients. Um, 
which is giving me the opportunity to dedicate more time to my actual nutrition and training and stuff like that because I know it's not easy sticking to a meal plan when you have a family or you work a full-time job. Like, you have a lot of things going on. It's hard to make food a priority. So, um, I actually have that advantage now, which is much different than last off season, <laughs> which was uh, four years ago. <laughs> That's the last time I had an off season. So, um, this this time will be different. So, I'm actually, this will be the first off season I'm actually able to eat, sleep, and train. Like those, that is my job. Almost done. <laughs> Still a lot of food. <laughs> okay, I can only eat so fast. It's funny. One of the um, older guys that I look up to, I'm talking about, I used to eat so much that. I almost want to throw up. I have not reached that point yet. I I just I couldn't. <laughs> I get tired of eating before I reach that point. <clears throat> but you know, I think what he meant was just constantly eating. Constantly eating, constantly feeding my body because if you have genetics like I do and you have a fast metabolism, um, it's it's not an easy task to gain weight. On the flip side of that, when I do gain weight, it's always lean muscle. Um, I don't carry a lot of body fat in the off season. Um, in the times, like I said, I've been in between shows and I might relax the diet for you know, maybe four to six weeks and then right back to work, you know, for prep for a show. I've never been more than 15 pounds outside of contest weight. So when you figure in the amount of water I carry in body fat, that's not a lot. So uh, I'm eating, but it's a task. So if everyone wondering, you know, your nutrition is just as important as your training. Because if this isn't right, then you can't train properly. If you can't train properly, you're not going to grow. So you said if you're up, if you're not asleep, and you're not in the gym, you should be eating. It's easier said than done. It's pretty crazy the Olympias in five weeks. Wow. By the time you see you guys see this video, it'll probably be four weeks. A week before Christmas. It's crazy. Who would have thought we'd see something like that? Who do you guys have picked to win? Let me know in the comment section. And it's going to be a very competitive show. Which is what we all want to see. So, I had enough. Okay. Let me wrap that up minus a few bites that I'm not going to really be concerned about. I need to get going so I can train. So like I said, guys, you don't have to have your meals, you know, plain like I have them. I just, like I said, I've made it so many different ways. Over the past few years, I just don't put much effort into it now because it all goes down the same. But yeah, different things you can use, salsas, you know, some people ask, you know, what type of sauces can you use? It's your choice. There's sugar-free barbecue sauce. There's, 
like I said, some people use light salad dressing. Um, it's just whatever your preference is. So you do that, you should be fine. Um, like I said, there's, you know, a couple different things that you're going to include in your diet. So that's where your, your supplements and stuff come in. A lot of people always ask me about the Yamamoto products. So it just depends what I'm doing, where I'm at. Uh, they have quite a, you'll see some of the stuff on top of the refrigerator here. Uh, there's a great line of products that they have. Uh, but for me on a daily basis, I'll have my Black Guardian, which is like basic internal support, you know, liver, kidney function, stuff like that. Glycogen or glycoball. I'll have one of these two, you know, during training because it's pretty much a carb drink. So you want to get a good pump. Like I was telling you, the more energy you're going to put out in the gym, then you're going to have more nutrients running through your body. And obviously, since you're not going to eat while you train, uh, these two products will come in handy. You have your pre-workout. I'll have this roughly about 30 minutes before I train. So I'll have this here shortly in a little bit. Uh, if I'm getting ready for a contest or a photo shoot or whatever, then, you know, you have AI burn, which is a really, really good fat burner. So those are just a few of the daily ones that I'll use. Um, Omega Pros, you got to get your vitamins and stuff in. You know, here's Flex Lewis line. This is a pre-workout. You know, so it's just basically whatever you're trying to achieve, that's going to determine uh, what sports supplements you use. But check them out. Like I said, Yamamoto Nutrition. You guys, I don't just say that because they sponsor me. I actually use the products. So they're good, especially the Glycoball. The glycogen is really good, but I do notice on the Glycoball Ultra that there I get more of a pump when I'm training. So I have that, and then I also have my Arginine Pro. Oh, it's actually in my backpack. Uh, I'll have that before you know before I train. So I'd be a couple times before a couple take a couple of those before I actually train. Oh yeah, there you go. So it's Arginine Pro. So I'll have this, you know, with pre-workout, my aminos, stuff like that. <clears throat> Sports supplements, guys, you got to be careful with, you know, with the ones that you buy because you want to make sure that the products are actually good quality products and you don't want to just take any and everything. Uh, like I said, when you go to a website, you should always look up and see the ingredients of a product, you know, try to see how long that company's been around. All those little stuff that I don't have to tell you guys, but I, I just want you to know it is important what sports supplements you take because a lot of people will say all pre-workouts are the same, all aminos are the same, you know, no, they're not different products have different ingredients. So just make sure you do your research on which products you're actually using. So like I said, for me, uh, I'm always health conscious, not just of how my workouts are going, but how I'm feeling overall. And that can be a side effect of the sports supplements that you're taking. But I've noticed with Yamamoto, I get good pumps. My energy's good. I sweat like hell when I take the AI burn. So for you guys that are trying to drop some weight, you check that out because it's bring some extra clothes to the gym. I just tell you that because you're going to sweat like hell. And a good pre-workout, the kamikaze that I just had out here for you guys, it's really good because you get a good pump. I mean, I'm going to have to order some. Obviously, you guys can see it's almost about empty. But you get a good pump. Your energy is good, but it's not that shaky, jittery, itchy feeling that a lot of people actually think makes a good pre-workout because that doesn't. Uh, how your energy level and your focus in the gym actually what makes a good pre-workout. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're picking up products or you're ordering online or whatnot. But I, like I said, I highly recommend you try Yamamoto Nutrition because I'm with them for a reason. Trust me, I was approached by some other companies, but this was the one that I had a chance to try the products. I really liked them. Felt good, still feel good. Uh, and obviously I won't be switching anytime soon. So make sure you check them out and Make sure you have a complete regimen with your sports supplements, like pre-workout, during the workout, post-workout. 
all that stuff makes a difference. Like I said, the Glycoball Ultra and Aminos, you can take those intra workout. I mean, I've done it before, but for the most part, I'll have Aminos twice a day. So I usually have them, you know, mid morning and then I'll have them again towards the evening time just so I can try to up the recovery rate. <clears throat> All right. Let's see for that. It's 12, 10. So we're going to give this food just a little bit of time to digest. While that happens, I'm going to do what I love to do in my free time. And that is play some video games. I have a pretty good selection, but right now, um, obviously now I'm mostly on Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, so I'm playing that pretty much every day. But I'll play some other ones, Street Fighter, Dragon Ball, Soul Calibur, Tekken, Mortal Kombat, just to name a few. Uh, but the new PS5 is now out, so I'll be checking that out at some point. But for now... I'm going to stick with this uh, until the hype calms down because I believe I actually saw something online where they were pretty pricey, uh, you know. But like with every everything new that comes out, there's always a first rush to run and get it. So this is kind of what I'm just going to be doing for now until maybe after the holidays because I'm not going to pay some crazy markup. You know, for a video game. That's not going to happen. But that's my little guy right there. You guys, PTM the Great. If you want to get on there and get some games in, shoot me a request. I'll save you. I'll add you guys. And then we can get it on. I don't play that often. But when I do, maybe a couple times you know, a week, then I try to spend maybe an hour or so trying to keep my skills sharp because you never know, someone might try me. And so then I gotta get on here and let them know that this isn't a game. I mean, it is a game, but it's not a game. You get the picture. So you guys can see, this is for all my game guys. You'll recognize, you see edit loadouts. I don't have very many that I use so I know a lot of people, these, they're all set up. They're all good to go. But for me, I just have a couple that I use. This one, for the most part. FN Scar is probably the one I am fond of right now. Right. Now we got some guys joining us in the lobby. So it's time to play. So like I said, generally after, you know, eating, um, I take about an hour, hour and 10 minutes before I actually go train. And the gym I'm going to train at today is roughly 12 minutes from here. It's not far at all. So they give me a little bit of time to kill while I let the food settle. I'm not big on training immediately after eating because your stomach's full. I just can't train effectively like that because I just don't I like to drink my pre-workout I just like to train virtually on the empty stomach if possible this is generally my daily life for the most part when I have free time anyway oh, oh. Oh, double kill and a king slayer. See, you gotta watch those corners. You run out there and you get killed. See, shot shot me in the back like a coward. You guys saw that long shot killed a sniper with a rifle. 
those guys just got to be good, that's all. And I'm pretty good. Look, right here. Clown. Oh, good job. Double kill, and I'm bloodthirsty. Oh, somebody had to take me down. But that's generally it, guys. Played one match, couple matches. After that, start getting myself mentally in the routine, ready to go. So, you didn't see that, right? I'll train. I mean, I play a little Call of Duty before I train. Or, let's see what you guys may be a little bit more into. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So, how you guys watch motivational stuff? Uh, I do too. No different. Real big. You know, I've had to start small. And what a lot of people don't understand is you see me big up there like that, but you know, it took a long time to get there. Took a long I time. I just wanted a free membership. Didn't happen overnight. So, you guys, Patrick, you should gain 20, 30 pounds. It doesn't happen overnight. You guys don't understand. This type of muscle, real muscle, takes time to build. So, these are the guys that I watch. You know, I was doing security at a Mr. Olympia event, and most of the people in the audience thought that I should be on stage back then. I didn't think so, you know, but they thought that. I had 22, 23 inch arms back then. That I sounds familiar. Like 29 when I first started. 22, 23, 23 and on. Many people that are gifted like he is won't work that hard. Let's go back in time where Ronnie Coleman was just a cop out here in Arlington on the beat. Prior to that, delivering pizzas for a living. He takes everything very, very seriously. You know, from the diet to the aerobics to the rest to the everything down to the tea. It's all very important. Old King Ronnie. Look at that. One day at a time to the reset goal. You guys can learn something. Hell safety in '92, and really quickly, what was that experience like in those homes? Dead last, the king. Two thirty-three, two thirty-four. Then he jumped to two fifty. It's annoying, I know. You actually may encounter a couple of ads watching my video. Trust me, I'm as annoyed by ads as you are annoyed by the ads you're probably seeing. It was the summer of 98. The flex. But Ronnie had come through, you know, beating all over Ronnie a few times. For the first time in the Knights of the Champions, when Ronnie hit that back double biceps, there was a guy that wouldn't be overpowered in that pose, which is his best pose. I took Ronnie to be in the top five, and, and we hadn't thought of him as a top ten guy really. It was ninth the year before. But that would be this man. You want to you want to with the big dogs? Got to do what the big dogs doing. Got to do what the big dogs doing. And I'm about to do what the big dogs are doing. 
Crazy. Crazy. He got better at what he kept doing. I was trying to this After 99, that was a wrap. So I kept getting bigger and bigger. So I was catch up with him. Of 98, actually, sorry. King J. Two thousand three was crazy. Came back with the monster that year. It was just crazy. It was the best run we ever seen. It was like two hundred eighty pounds and ripped. And it was like no one was gonna be in that year. Alright. Now I'm ready to train. I'm gonna see you.